listen bro i'm not a samsung fanboy i'm not loyal to any company i don't care who makes a phone if somebody makes a phone and it's good it's the best i'm gonna use that listen google pixel fold is my favorite foldable phone in terms of form factor if google makes the pixel fold with all these features bro uh stylus support multitasking capabilities triple split screen app pairs edge panel if google makes the pixel fold 2 with all these features and it drops in canada and it runs well i'm buying that bro all right let's get this video going man all right what's good welcome back to another video it is jamal here with another video this video is going to be about the s24 ultra it's going to be my full review on it so let's get into it so right now i'm in the car i'm filming from the s24 ultra this is the front facing camera and the b-roll you saw before this footage was on the main camera i thought like let me just use the phone built-in mic and the phone's built-in cameras to you know simultaneously test the phone and show what it's capable of in like a neutral environment you know outside with natural lighting no additional lighting set up by me and yeah see how it sounds and let's get this review done all right so i got my s pen this is part of the review but you can use the s pen as a remote control so i use the s pen to start the video and stop the video if i need to so that's pretty sick and you can also use it to flip the camera like seeing the rear view and then i use it to switch back Ugh. i just messed up my nothing phone twos hopefully that's just a screen protector Anyways, the S24 Ultra in terms of build quality is probably some of my favorite in terms of um, any phone that Samsung has released. I just really like the, the matte finish on the frame and the matte finish on the back. I really like that they, they put a matte texture all around the whole phone rather than, you know, having the sides shiny or glossy and then the back matte or a reverse. I just appreciate matte being all over the phone. To me, it's just better clean design and, it, you know, reduces fingerprints and stuff like that. Glossy stuff looks nice, but then after like two seconds, it's it looks disgusting because of fingerprints. You just can't get around that. I like holding this phone without a case more than with a case, but then I can see how if you have like a good case that kind of rounds off the edges, it might be more comfortable long term. But anyways, that's just the, the build quality and, and the overall um, hardware. The screen is something that like a lot of people are talking about. You know, you got the banding, the graininess, all those kind of issues. And to be honest, I haven't, like I think my phone I've had two S24 Ultras, you know, just for different reasons, testing it, seeing if I want to keep it or not. And both of them had the grainy issue. And even I think this one has the banding issue. I didn't see down the other one that I had. But to be honest, those issues, like they are, Samsung should definitely do better. But at the same time, these issues, I wouldn't have known they, they were there. I wouldn't have known they were super bad if I didn't read the Reddit page. So, you know, the graininess and the banding is definitely there on this phone and probably on most of the S24 Ultras out there. But to be honest, it doesn't affect my daily usage this is still like my probably my favorite samsung phone screen of all time um just in terms of the quality the sharpness the brightness the anti-reflection this is what i want to get into the anti-reflective uh layer or whatever the coating it is really enjoyable like some people like kind of downplay it too much and some people overrate it too much or whatever but in the middle this is like one of the best smartphone displays i've used and it's not an exaggeration for me. Like I've used the 15 Pro Max, I've used Z Fold 5, OnePlus Open, Pixel Fold. I've used a lot of top high-end phones with the best screens. And I gotta say that the S24 Ultra is probably my favorite screen. I've even used the S23 Ultra, I had that um, last year. Bunch of phone screens and the S24 Ultra is my favorite phone screen of all of them that I've used because of, you know, like I said, the sharpness, the quality, all that stuff, but also the anti-reflection it makes a big difference for me personally like it does obviously you're going to still see reflections because it is a glass screen you know you're just going to see reflections regardless of how how anti-reflective a thing is but the reflections are there but they're not as intrusive as other uh devices and for me the the reflection is not even the biggest um thing that i look out for when it comes to these kind of things for me it's the way that light bounces off of the screen so when i'm using this phone outside or you know even inside a walk-in and there's different light sources like my lights are on or tv screen whatever the windows those lights if i'm using like other phones like you know nothing phone 2 or 15 pro max z45 whatever the reflection of other light sources is super annoying because the light kind of bounces off and bounces straight into my eyes and for me that bothers me a lot when i'm using screen so i try to you know use any screen whether it be a smartphone or a tv or a laptop, I try to use those screens where there's no lights behind me. But with this phone, 
I honestly don't feel, I don't find myself doing that because it's like I said, you still will see reflections, but it's not as bad. And the light bouncing off the screen to your eyes from like other light sources, it actually is not that harsh and it's pretty diffuse on the screen. So you like the glaring is glaring is not an issue for me with this phone. Like it, it definitely still has some glare, but it, it's so diffuse and it's so minimal that like it doesn't bother me at all. I don't feel the need to you know switch my angle. So I'm going off a lot about the anti-reflective layer, the anti-reflective screen, but like it's it's actually for me, it's, it's actually tough. I actually enjoy it so much. It's a good welcome to upgrade. The flat screen is really good something that i enjoy but um i don't know so maybe i'm wrong but but hear me out so i prefer i prefer flat phone screens like nothing phone to 15 pro max i prefer um the phones to be flat with their screens right but with the s24 ultra it's a flat screen a flat panel but then it's slightly like the bezel is slightly curved over the edge um and goes into the frame and uh like for me this doesn't feel it doesn't feel like a completely flat screen because it has that slight curve in the bezel. The reason why I don't like this is because like with the S Pen, using the S Pen is way better with the flat screen because you're not you're less likely to slide off the edge by accident. But with uh, the S24 Ultra, it happens less than like the S23 Ultra, like sliding off the edge with the S Pen. But the screen, it, like I said, it has a slight curve on the bezel and that can still, you know, my, my S Pen can still slide off. It's, it's not exactly like super flat how I would want it personally. So it is a flat panel, but I wish like it was flat to the edge, you know, into the bezel. That's just me though. I feel like maybe the way that Samsung did it, it makes it more comfortable to hold or something like that. It's not, it's not that big of an issue to be honest. I rather this than like the S23 Ultra, but it is something to note in my personal experience that it's not like completely flat. Yeah, for me it makes a difference, but it's not, it's not that serious. The titanium stuff. Personally, I feel like the titanium trend is just a, a marketing thing for all these companies, whether it be Apple, Samsung xiaomi i think it's just a marketing thing like yes that titanium will add to the frame make it a little bit more durable uh in the iphone's case will make it lighter because they use a, a different grade and a different amount of titanium but it's really just marketing at the end of the day bro like they still use glass at the back of the phone so regardless of how strong the frame is you drop the phone on the back or at the right angle, the, the glass is going to break. It just, it is what it is. In terms of durability though, speaking again about the screen, the front screen is this new Gorilla Glass uh, armor and yo, they, they did something. Like this is the first time I've seen a smartphone screen like actually perform differently in terms of durability. Usually with, with smartphones, if I don't put a screen protector on right away, I will see micro scratches like literally like the day after having it. It's just what it is, like micro scratches just come up. And I've had two S24 Ultras. With both of them, I've, you know, this one I had, it's been like, what, like a couple weeks. The other one I had for a couple weeks before I returned it to Samsung. Um, With both of them, no micro scratches, like literally none. This is a very scratch resistant phone. And to be honest, glass is glass and glass breaks. So if you drop this phone, you know, it's probably going to break. Same way as another phone, no matter how strong the glass is, unless it's like diamond or something like that, then it's going to break, right? So in terms of like breakability, I don't really care too much about that because, you, you know, like this could be really strong glass and I've seen the drop test and it, it it holds together well. Like if you drop the phone once, it's still going to work, even though there are some, some cracks in it. Realistically, I'm not going to use a cracked phone. So even if the phone is not fully broken and there's cracks in it, I'm still going to replace the screen regardless of how small the damage is. So, you know, glass is glass and glass breaks. So when it comes to like durability for the screens and the glass, I don't care about cracks and breaking and stuff like that because that's just an inevitable. What I personally care about is scratches because scratches bother me a lot. I see them and I just don't, I don't like to see scratches. I don't like to see, you know, things interrupting the, you know, the beauty and the perfection of my devices that I'm using, right? So I will take scratch resistance any day of the week over uh, durability. That might be controversial, but that's just how I feel because I don't personally drop my phones and my devices that much. So um, give me scratch resistance all day. And most of the time I will, I'll be using a case, right? Preferably, I don't want to use a case or a screen protector. And, and with this phone, I feel like I don't need a screen protector because of how scratch resistant it is. But I know that if I drop it, at a bad angle this one's gonna break just like every other phone would so yeah so let's talk about the ai now so ai is let's uh according to marquez brownlee is gonna be the big thing this year the buzzword that like everybody's talking about that companies are just gonna be putting out ai features and products and blah 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 personally i i'm not i'm not buying into the ai hype like 
I think AI is cool and could be useful in like very specific use cases, but like for your everyday person, like I just don't see AI, you know, taking off and being that crazy. And to, in my opinion, you already kind of see that, right? Like right now, Samsung has put out AI features on their newest phones and it's coming to the older phones. Google has been having some AI features and these features like I'm not going to call them gimmicks because everybody values, you know, different features differently. Like some people, some crazy iPhone fans say that split screen is a gimmick. Um, I don't know how you can say that, but it is what it is. They don't value split screen multitasking as much as I do. So I'm not, you know, but I'm not going to call a feature that I don't value a gimmick. However, the AI features that are available on the S24 Ultra, they really don't, in my opinion, move the needle. They don't really do that much to have your whole presentation be centered around ai and like literally there's only like what like 10 new features and they're kind of just like whatever is it's some it's whatever to me you know with photography and images and stuff like that i'm not gonna want to move my subject from one end of the photo to another end i'm not gonna like want to move i'm not gonna move my subject around like that's just something that i don't do if i take a photo and i don't like how it looks i'm gonna take uh, another photo i'm gonna adjust it like that i'm gonna adjust my the car got tired of me i'm gonna adjust the composition so yeah i'm not gonna just randomly move my subject in the photo and then make the ai generate you know background to adjust and compensate for that and i don't i don't often like remove things from the background of photos like i just feel like i try to get everything framed up how i want it to be the first time i take the photo if there's like a speck of dust or something like that i might use that that feature but to be honest i just i edit it myself in like a different app like pixar or something like that so the AI photo capabilities are cool. They're definitely like conversation starters. But to be honest, for most of my time having S24 Ultra, other than like trying to test it out for videos and stuff like that to show friends, I just turn that feature off. For most of the other stuff, I turn it off, like the translation, you know, transcribing. I, I want to try that one out more because like maybe it could be useful for like creating notes and stuff, like speaking and having it write down all the words and things I'm saying. That could be useful but like most of the ai features i really don't use the one that i've tried to use a little bit more is like the circle to google stuff so you can like press and hold on the navigational bar and then you can circle something on your screen and it will google it like super fast it's really fast and i think it's well done but like i don't know bro like how often am i gonna be me personally i don't see things that often where it's like damn i need to google this like i don't know what that is you know i don't that doesn't happen to me that often if i need to google something it's not because i see something it's because I'm, I'm thinking like oh um what was that one product that i saw the other day i go and i go and google on my browser and then i type it in like you know product blah blah, blah details to try and find it it's not something that i see on my screen that i want to circle yeah man i don't really use the ai features if i'm being honest like i tried them and I tried to integrate them into my life, but they just, they're not that useful for me personally. So I would love to hear how, how you use the AI features and like how useful they are to you or like features you're looking forward to. But as of right now, um, AI is just whatever to me. Like I'm remembering right now the feature where it can help you adjust your text or like rewrite your whatever you wrote to like make it sound better, fit different styles and themes, whatever. Um, Even that feature is so limited. Like it can only do like, I think like one paragraph or something like that, or like, just a couple lines of of you know words sentences and that is pretty useful useless to me like if i'm trying to rework something and i want i want to see how ai is going to rewrite something for me um i need i need more than just like a couple of sentences or even like i think it's like three sentences or something like that bro it's like it's not a lot it's very limited in terms of how much you can allow the ai to rewrite what you wrote for that feature to be useful to me i need it to be able to like control a select everything on the page and then have the ai rewrite it and then i'll go through and see what it did and adjust it accordingly so even that feature i tried to use it but it, it's not useful for me because i write too much so yeah i don't uh the ai is just not it's not it for me it's just it doesn't really change anything for me this is not necessarily specific to this phone but samsung phones have the best customization of any android phone any smartphone out there like literally down to everything bro you can customize the way the phone looks the way that it acts the way that you switch apps like the app switcher you can customize that you can customize the notification panel you can customize the quick toggle shade you can customize um how your gestures work so like if i swipe and hold i can open up quick toggle menu or a quick launcher or i can literally do so many different things depending on how i swipe from the side of the phone i can customize um the you know the area of 
how my uh, gestures work, the area of where my gestures can work and be activated from. I can customize literally like think of like anything random or very small and you can customize it. Like, for example, you can customize what happens when you take the S Pen out of the phone. So I take it out. I can customize the sound so it'll play a, a cool sound. And then when I put it back in, it'll play another sound. And I can also customize like what happens when I take the S Pen out don't like maybe like an effect will happen or change the way the menu pops up i can customize the colors of that like literally customization on samsung phones is just elite all-time elite in terms of customization there's not there's nothing else that matches it multitasking is also is the best of the best on the s24 ultra like people i feel like a lot of people don't really understand how good samsung phones are at multitasking and the s24 ultra being a little bit more powerful just allows you to take that to another level it's not necessarily going to do it that much better than the s23 ultra you might not even notice the difference to be honest but if we're just reviewing the s24 ultra itself this is the best multitasking phone out right now that is not a foldable phone you can split screen very easily with the two finger swipe gesture you can um, drag and drop from the app switcher the task switcher you can drag and drop from your notification shade into split screen or into floating windows you can pull up the edge panel and drag and drop from there you can customize the edge panel to put like folders and app pairs so like let's say i have um youtube and tft and i do that frequently i can turn that into an app pair and put it in the, the edge panel then swipe tap that and boom it opens up two, those two apps when i need it you can put the app pairs on the home screen and then i was talking about customizing your your navigational gestures so right now how i have i have my phone set up basically if i swipe and hold down it'll pull up custom quick toggle controls so i have like i have my mobile data hotspot wi-fi controls uh brightness slider is a big one for me so i can just access the brightness slider no matter where i am on my phone in any app um, without reaching to the top of the screen, I can just access the brightness slider like that, the volume controls like that, and I can also enter split screen and floating windows like that very quickly. Um, I also have, uh, if I swipe and hold, like in the middle, then it will open up the quick launcher, which basically is a bunch of apps, like recent used apps, or um, I can customize it. And I can open those apps just like normally, or I can open them in split screen or in uh, floating windows very quickly. Multitasking is just crazy on this phone. Like you can literally do so much. And believe it or not, I use split screen with like two floating windows regularly, every day. Multitask with like four apps at a time to do different things, whether it's finances, whether it's planning videos, you know, multitasking is, is crazy. It's good on this phone. It's not as good as the Z4 5, obviously, because it's a smaller screen, but it works really well. And if you want to take it further, there is Samsung Dex. You plug this phone to a monitor. You can do that with a, a dongle, a HDMI adapter, or wirelessly if your display supports Miracast. And you have a computer interface on a screen straight from this phone, powered by this phone. And you can literally do whatever you want. Like, you can open up as many windows as you want with all your apps. You can op open up as many windows of your browser and just go crazy with multitasking and do so many different things. It's literally like a pc interface obviously you won't have pc app but you will have access to you know full internet web-based apps and different things you might do in your browser and for me i use this for like you know writing notes writing documents um sometimes video editing um some a lot of times i use it for like content consumption as well so i have a video on my computer monitor so the way that my desk setup is right now i have my Mac mini for like music production mainly and then I'll have a USB hub that connects with the USB-C to whatever device I plug into it and I will use that for either my Galaxy device this S24 Ultra I'll plug it in and it turns into my desktop or um, I'll plug in my Lenovo Legion Go and those are my computers right there basically this S24 Ultra right now is my main computer that I use for everything that I need it to and if I need to like lock in and get serious with like typing and stuff like that researching um multiple windows and stuff i'll plug it into a monitor i'll plug it into my setup at my desk and i already have a keyboard plugged into the hub so when i plug in this phone to the monitor and stuff everything's connected i have a wireless mouse there and i'm ready to be productive all from my phone and i have no issues in terms of performance when i use samsung Dex on this phone the only times i see like stuttering and stuff like that is when i'm video editing for a long time so this phone is just a productivity beast and there is no other normal phone that can compare to this S24 Ultra. All right, so let's talk about the S Pen now. So this is the S Pen in the S24 Ultra. You know, I like how it's a little bit thicker. It feels easier to hold this time around. Um, a lot of people don't know why the S Pen exists. They don't really see a point for it. Like a lot of people ask like, what do you use it for? Obviously you can use it to draw. And this, it might feel weird because this phone is like, it's not a tablet, right? So the screen is a little bit small um, compared to what you would normally draw on. 
but the screen size is actually decent and one thing that i found that works for me is like even with note taking is turning the phone horizontally so like you zoom in and then you can do your thing more comfortably you have more space as if you're working on your z fold 5 but you have to like constantly move the canvas or the space um vertically while you're writing horizontally across like that it gives you a little bit more space to rest your hand and write comfortably anyway so obviously you can use it for drawing you can use it for note taking i think both of those use cases work well the s pen is like this is like a really responsive pen pressure sensitivity is on point the tilt sensitivity is on point it works really well like i've seen some artists do amazing things with the s pen this little s pen right here and then on top of that there's bluetooth capabilities so like you can use it as a remote for you know playing media so you can scroll through your music like let's say you want to skip a song you can do that with the s pen doing gestures like this you can um you know raise the volume lower the volume you can reverse to the previous song and this works on youtube or you know whatever video service you're watching so you can pause the video you can play the video you can skip the video all those media controls work with the s pen bluetooth so i can connect this to a monitor or a screen and then you know go on my bed or my couch and use the s pen to control it i can prop this up like right now i have the camera i'm holding the camera up let's say it was on a tripod i can use the s pen to play pause switch the camera um and just do different things the s pen has so many capabilities bluetooth capabilities and there's more gestures that i didn't mention yeah functionality is crazy i wish the s pen was built into every samsung device and uh, like you could just pull it out at any time so in my experience using these cameras so far they're good they definitely need to be tuned and optimized a little bit more but in terms of like like straight out the box i think these are some really good cameras high quality um on par with every other camera on the market i think that the 15 pro max people always say it's better and this and that but i think it's pretty close and to be honest i've seen a lot of scenarios where this phone performs better or just looks better for my personal taste particularly in like lower lit situations the iphone tends to like really brighten everything and like everything looks really soft whereas the s24 ultra i feel like it has more, it's, it has a more contrasty look a more um natural looking look in terms of like lighting and stuff like that like right now in this shot right here obviously it's not gonna be the best because the front camera and it's not the best lighting situation but like with the iphone the, it would have just brightened everything on my face and everything in the dark like you can see the the light back there in the window all this like shadowy area you see my hand right here with the light and then the shadow all the shadowy area the iphone would have just brightened it and made it super smooth and just unrealistic to how the scene actually looks but with this i feel like it's a little bit more natural it allows shadowy areas to be shadowy so i appreciate that about these cameras and the algorithm so but anyways the ceiling is just very high with the s24 ultra like 200 megapixels like you can literally take professional photos on this phone obviously it's going to take time to like you know tweak the settings to find the best uh, methods and ways best area to take photos all that stuff but that's just like if you are willing to try to get a good shot like as a photographer or enthusiast if you're willing to put in that work then this phone will reward you for sure it has the hardware it has the software and i'm not even i'm talking about like the base camera app with pro mode and stuff like that but then there's also expert rob which you can go crazy with like multiple exposures and you know so many different things that you can mess around with this camera so that's why i say it has in my opinion the highest ceiling of any camera the highest potential of any like smartphone camera out there um because of all the things that it has available but in terms of like everyday usage i would say it's just yeah i would say it's on par with the 15 pro max so like whatever, wherever you put them 15 pro max and the s24 ultra are on par with each other but in terms of like ceiling highest potential i'm gonna put the s24 ultra up there and then to be honest i don't have access to a lot of the chinese phones i feel like those just have better phone cameras than most of the phones we have out here in terms of potential and ceilings in north america and canada right now s24 ultra is probably the best phone camera in my opinion because of all the things not just like taking pictures of kids and pets which i think this phone does fine in my experience the iphone and this perform very similarly if i'm taking pictures of my daughter and my my rabbit the iphone get like four out of five pictures right and this will get like three out of five pictures right so it's it's not as like quick with the shutter speed and like you know getting a sharp image of like a moving subject but it it honestly it's not that far behind the iphone like people i in my opinion overhyped the iphone a lot when it comes to that kind of stuff though i think the only phones that i've really seen perform well in you know just everyday point and shoot scenarios consistently i think is the pixel phones iphones haven't really performed that well for me in those areas so yeah that's how i feel about the cameras let's get let's go to the performance so thermal performance 
is something that I was really excited about. Samsung made a, uh, you know, a section of their presentation for this phone talking about how they upgraded the thermal performance. They, you know, upgraded the vapor chamber, all that stuff to make it manage heat better. And to, you know, obviously with better heat management, it means that the phone can perform at the best performance for a longer period of time. I was really excited about that. And to be honest, it does perform well. It does perform better than the Z4 5 and even the S23 Ultra in my experience. But it's not like that much better, to be honest. It's very incremental and um, it's not as, as much as I had hoped. Obviously, it doesn't have an active cooling system inside of it. So there's only so much they can do. But I, I wish it was better. It's a little disappointing, but this phone is still a beast regardless, and it still works well. It can still game um, all the top tier games at high settings. You know, you'll get some decent frame rates, but in terms of video editing, it performs better than like previous phones I've had, but it's still not quite on the level of the iPhone 15 Pro Max. That's probably like the best video editing experience I've had with any smartphone yet. So hopefully we can get there with some optimization. I think LumaFusion on Android is just really poorly optimized. The app is just... I'm gonna make a video on LumaFusion later on, but the app is just not that good, man. So hopefully they can fix that and optimize it more. But it performs, you know, it performs good. It performs better than my Z Fold 5 and other Android phones I've had uh, in video editing. So yeah. One thing I really love that I'll mention here is the always on display. I know a lot of people were making fun of Apple when they put out their always on display with the, the 14 Pro Max. But to be honest, I loved that always on display when I first saw it and I still love it now. 15 Pro Max has the best always on display of any smartphone in my opinion because of one, I like the, the fact that you can see the, the wallpaper and two, the functionality of the iPhone always on display is actually really nice. And I don't think a lot of Android people are really, really take that in. Like the always on display on the iPhone, it can show like active things. It can show full notifications. So like, let's say I get a text, I can see that full text on the always on display without the phone screen turning on. I think that is a beautiful, good implementation. For me, it works so perfectly. If I have my iPhone just laying down and I see a glance over, I got a text, I can read the text on the always on display. And then also it works with like, let's say there's a Raptors game going on. I can see the Raptors score and it updates actively. It'll show like, you know, blocking foul, blah, 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 or 10 minutes left in the fourth quarter, uh, 99 to 102, something like that score. It will show those, those updates on the always on display fully on the iPhone. That is something that I really enjoy. So anyways, I love the iPhones always, always on display and I'm happy that Samsung is going in that direction with the, the wallpaper and even the widgets. iPhone has genuinely some useful widgets on the always on display. Like I can see my Tesla battery. I can see, you know, calendar, stuff like that. Samsung is going in that direction, but the widgets are very limited in terms of what options you have. And it also doesn't have the live updates like it does on the iPhone. So if I get a text, all I will see is the little icon for the text messaging app or whatever whatever notification it is, it will just be the icon and that's it. It doesn't show you the text or anything like that. It doesn't show you details from the app. It's literally just, just that. So that's pretty unfortunate, but I really like seeing my wallpaper as is always on display. That is really cool. In terms of general usage, I have no lag, no stuttering. With the S23 Ultra, I had stuttering. 22 Ultra, I, ha I had hella stuttering, but even with the Z4 5, I had some stuttering. Like not nothing crazy when I'm talking about starting with those phones, but with this one I had like no stuttering at all, no pausing, no lagging, no glitching at all. This phone just runs smooth 100% of the time, and that's something that I cannot say for most Android phones I've used in the past, you know, couple of years. And even iPhones, I've had stuttering on iPhones too. Don't get it twisted, bro. 15 Pro Max, I've experienced stuttering on that. So don't get it twisted. I've experienced overheating on that phone too. But this phone right here, this phone performs like peak proper like smooth if i'm not doing anything intensive this phone just works so well and i have no stuttering issues with it network speeds are proper as good as every other phone i've used maybe even better stability has been good i haven't had disconnections from wi-fi or my phone network speakers are good but generally i, I just use my my xm5s right here so you know i don't really use built-in speakers on any device really but they work well when you when i use them but yeah overall man my, my review on the s24 ultra is this is this is an ultra phone this is an ultra phone in terms of features, in terms of capability, in terms of potential, all the things you can do with it, the cameras, the S Pen, the multitasking, the power. This is an ultra phone. In my opinion, this is the best package for any smartphone. Like if you want to just throw a bag, throw money at like the best of the best in terms of capability and all the features, everything you get for the price you're paying for, I think this is the most worth it when it comes to the expensive phones, the S24 Ultra right here. And it really depends on what you value, but like this is the best of the best, man. And people talk about bloat and this and that. I'll quickly speak on the bloatware. So people say Samsung has bloatware and they're tired, blah, blah, blah. 
you know, they complain about it. To me, bloatware in 2024, in terms of like Samsung apps, like 90, 95% of them, you can literally uninstall the apps that people consider bloatware. And then if you can't uninstall it, you can disable it and it's gone. It's, it's, not, it's never going to bother you. And then on top of that, those apps are like a couple of kilobytes, megabytes. Like they don't take up any space on the phone at all. And on top of that, when you think about bloatware, every phone has it, no matter which company, no matter what phone you're buying, Pixel phone, iPhone. iPhone has like the most bloatware I've ever seen on any phone. Like there's so many apps on iPhones that come share out the box that I do not use at all. Pixel phones have bloatware. Like I don't use Google TV. Why is Google TV on my Pixel phone when I buy it and take it out of the box? You know, I don't use that. But I'm not going to complain about it because I understand it. If you're buying a phone, a Google phone, you're going to get Google apps on it. If you're buying a Samsung phone, you're going to get Samsung apps on it. So that means I'm going to get, you know, Samsung Gallery. I'm going to get Samsung Internet. You're going to get those things. If you buy an iPhone, you're going to get Safari, blah, blah, blah. You're going to get iPhone specific apps. So if you're buying a specific phone from a specific company, you're going to get specific apps from the specific company. You see what I'm saying? So when people try to use bloatware as a negative against Samsung, it doesn't really make sense to me because every phone has bloatware to some extent, some worse than others. But like now in 2024, like I said, you can uninstall most of them. For most of the Samsung apps that you don't use, you can disable most of them. So it's not really a, a major issue. It's not an issue at all, in my opinion. And the last thing I'll say on this is if you are willing to try it out, some of those Samsung, most of those Samsung apps are better than the counterparts. I like Samsung's Messenger better than the Google Messages, but what stops me from using Samsung Messages is that it doesn't have RCS. If it had RCS, I would use it in a heartbeat because Samsung Messages has more customization, more features. That's it. But I, that's that's the only one I, I'll say like, yeah, just use Google Messages and even Samsung defaults to Google Messages. However, Samsung Gallery app, way better than Photos. I don't use Photos unless I'm trying to transfer things, you know, from different devices. I hate Google Photos because constantly, it's buy more storage, it's use the cloud services. You can't even make like, you can't make albums on Google Photos unless you sync it to the cloud. You, there's just a lot of things you can't do with Google Photos very easily. The gallery app for Samsung is way better. And in my opinion, just more genuinely more useful. Like it doesn't require you to use any online services or anything like that. It just works well. Samsung Music works really well. You can create playlists of the files on your phone. You can do so many different things on Samsung Music. Samsung Calendar is probably my favorite because of the, the widget. All the Samsung apps have these widgets that you can make transparent and it fits the aesthetic that I like, the theme that I like on my phone. So I, I, so I think that's underrated. And then another nice thing about Samsung Calendar is that you can use the S Pen to literally doodle or write on the calendar and it will show up on the widget as well. Super underrated feature. And yeah, I use the Samsung apps because I really appreciate the transparent thing, like I said. All the apps have a transparent widget or can be transparent as widgets on your home screen and it fits my aesthetic fits the vibe that i'm going for with my phone really it looks really nice and they all just function well like the email app everything so yeah but yeah so that's all i'll say in terms of bloatware and all that but like going back to what i was saying my closing points i think this is the best of the best in terms of smartphones productivity like all around overall package i think samsung has been killing it for the last couple of years and the s24 ultra just is is the same but a little bit better in my opinion I know people talk about display issues and banding and grain and stuff like that, but really, if you're not looking for those issues, and me personally, I don't see, I haven't, I didn't, t I didn't think about that until like I read Reddit, like I said before, and even after, you know, seeing the grain and the banding on a specific website, looking at specific images and different specific colors to see these issues, it's not an issue, bro. In my everyday life, it's not an issue. Like I'm, I'm using this phone. It's the, like I said, best phone screen I've used. I enjoy it so much. S24 Ultra is the best of the best in my opinion. And listen, bro, I'm not a Samsung fanboy. I'm not loyal to any company. I don't care who makes the phone. If somebody makes a phone and it's good, it's the best. I'm gonna use that. If Google made a, listen, Google Pixel Fold is my favorite foldable phone in terms of form factor. If Google makes the Pixel Fold with all these features, bro, uh, stylus support, multitasking capabilities triple split screen app pairs edge panel if google makes the pixel fold 2 with all these features and it drops in canada and it runs well i'm buying that bro i'm switching if apple makes the same phone that i just mentioned with a nice form factor i'm buying that like i'm not loyal to any brand i'm loyal to good products and i think samsung right now is making the best of the best if you're somebody like me who uses all the features and the capabilities so that's how i feel about the s24 ultra I think it's the best of the best in terms of normal smartphones and it has the highest ceilings because of the, just the capabilities that you can do with it in terms of productivity, multitasking and the cameras, this very high ceiling, like you can do a lot. Anyways, that's how I feel. I know this video is a little bit rough and it's a little bit freeform 
but it is what it is i'm trying to get these videos out man in my opinion though so that's all for now we out peace